Ladies and gentlemen, this is David Maricatani with another episode of Weighing In. We are brought to you by USA Wrestling, the national governing body for wrestling in the United States and sponsored by Nike Wrestling. Go to athleteps.com for all of your Nike and USA Wrestling branded gear. As normal, my friend, good friend Mark Ostrander is with me, and we're joined today by another good friend of mine from Nike APS and Grandview Wrestling, Grant Turner. Before I turn it over to give Grant a chance to introduce himself, we want to make it clear that whatever opinions he expresses are those of Grant and not those of Grandview or USA Wrestling or Nike. Grant, I've been bugging you about this for a while. We're getting into freestyle and Greco season. Uh, this is really your wheelhouse. Give everybody a quick in intro of who you are for the six people in the wrestling world that don't know you. Well, I appreciate it, Dave, and it's been great to be able to get on the pod with you guys. It's going to be a great time, and, you know, whatever time that I can give you guys, I'm definitely going to have a lot of fun with it. So um, grew up in the wrestling community. I'm originally from Iowa. Um, grew up in uh, small town Iowa, moved to Des Moines, Iowa, wrestled at Iowa State for legendary coach Bobby Douglas and Kale Sanderson. Um, then basically have got into the sporting goods world after that and then uh, basically started with Nike in 2014. Um, and ever since that uh, time, I've also been a coach. I've been coaching at Grandview University since 2008. Um, and we've uh, had a lot of success at Grandview since we've started and broke, basically broke ground on that program. Uh, no alumni, nothing else, and basically got that thing going. So I'm um, very excited to be up on the podcast and, and weigh in on two cents worth of my own opinion. So it'd be great. Sure. And your, your school is right in Ostrander's neighborhood. He's an Ankeny guy. So, uh, I mean, he's seen the success, but nine out of the last 10 year guys, you guys have won the national championship. There was one year you guys, I think, tripled up the second place team. Uh, you get to coach alongside Nick Mitchell, who's one of the best college coaches in America, period, regardless of level. So uh, it was good to have you on today because, and I guess let's start with this. You, this weekend, were in Iowa for the trophy presentation. I was at Arizona State uh, working with those guys on Sunkist and some stuff like that. Why don't you tell the folks that didn't get to be there how that, what that presentation was like to be there? Oh, it was great. Uh, Coach Kirk Ferentz uh, and the Iowa Hawkeye football team had their spring game, and the Iowa wrestling uh, team got to kind of uh, piggyback off of that event. So they had their spring game, and, you know, they had it inside Kinnick. It was a gorgeous day. Um, but basically the wrestling team got to be presented to that entire crowd, and they, you know, they put on the, put on the show, had the guys walk out through the tunnel, just like the football team. And uh, there's just a very good – camaraderie between the Iowa sports teams. So Kirk was um, basically gave them the keys to the kingdom and said, hey, let's use it here and uh, let's present this uh, national championship trophy to our fans. Um, the president of the university spoke briefly um, to the entire audience and basically said, you know, hey, these guys do it right. Um, they work hard. And basically, you know, that was echoed by the entire Iowa football staff. Um, and everybody came up and shook all their guys' hands. You know, the guys on the football team, you know, they know how tough it is to win a national title and, and they're a perennial powerhouse within the Big Ten. So it was really cool to see both programs kind of, uh, you know, congratulate each other. So it was really cool. That's awesome. Uh, so Mark, you're an Iowa guy and, you know, you, you coached at Iowa Central and I know you're a University of Iowa fan growing up and now, you know, when you see something like that, and you look at the overlap that people have, you know, like the amount of like the offensive linemen and those kind of people that wrestled in high school and stuff like that as a guy that is like me, that was a fan that wasn't like GT that was there this weekend. You know, what kind of impressions do you have of that? Well, I know I, I was always had a really good reputation with the football program. You, you got to think that at least every year they have at least one Iowa kid that was a state champ on their line. The wrestlers are real close to some of these guys. I know Spencer Lee talks to the guy that got down at Tampa Bay that just won Super Bowl. Yeah, Tristan Ward. Yeah. yeah, they were buddies. Uh, and, you know, Spencer say he texts me, you know, once a week. We talk a little bit here and there. We're not best friends or anything, but we respect each other and we're real happy each other's being su successful. So, you know, that's just kind of how they're brought up at the University of Iowa. They do. They really do. They appreciate um, the other sports. Uh, so kudos to them. I wish I could have seen the presentation. I guess the only thing I was wondering, Grant, 
Did you hear anything while you were down there, whether or not Spencer Lee's going to have surgery or is he just going to let it heal like he did the other one? I haven't heard anything uh, particular about his, you know, his <laughs> position on whether or not he's going to, you know, go and do surgery or what his, what his goal is. I just knew, you know, he was, you know, just kind of, uh, I mean, you could tell he wasn't hundred percent, like even like walking around and things. So, okay. but I'm sure that, he'll make his decision with his family and coaches and figure that out. But I didn't hear anything to that, to that effect. Okay. Well, it's interesting because next weekend we're recording this on the 19th at around 1230 in the afternoon. The next weekend is a big tournament at Coralville grant. Well, grants at all these events. That's actually one of the ways how we originally met and I'll be up there as well. And I'm going through Iowa city. I think I Coralville is almost like a suburb of Iowa city, basically. And I'm going to get to do an in-person video interview with Tom, Terry, and Morningstar. So I'm pretty excited that. I always like to watch the guys talk about each other on the air. Like, I would love to get GTU and Nick together sometime and, like, Loman and all those guys. Because, I mean, they, it's like brothers. Like, there's this, all this admiration. No one else can mess with each other, but you guys bust each other every chance you can, you know? 100%. <laughs> so I, I'm looking forward to doing that. This past weekend, I was at Arizona State. I uh, got a chance to do a podcast with Frank and Lee and Zeke and uh, then went to a bunch of the fundraising things they had and the golf outing and all that kind of stuff. But there's two things that really stuck out to me. One, and the one word that gets used a lot is culture. They talked about changing the culture that five years ago, they were 65th and had one qualifier that scored no points. And then a year and a half ago, they beat Penn State in a dual meet. And this year, you know, they're they're top four in the country. They've got all, obviously, like everybody else, all their All-Americans coming back. They bring in Parco. And, you know, they have a kid like Norfleet who was ranked top four and didn't All-American this year, but was one of the All-Americans last year. So I thought that was really interesting. I want to talk to you guys about culture. But I'm going to start with Frank Molinaro discussed it. It obviously comes from Penn State, I believe, or, you know, Kale. But they talked a lot about it, which is this, this idea of gratitude, of being happy, being grateful for what you have, instead of complaining about what you don't have. I, you know, for the people maybe watching or listening for the first time, Mark was a national championship coach. Grant's a national championship coach. My dad and I were national runner-up coaches, so not a bad coaching resume on this podcast. But I don't think we talked a lot about gratitude. I mean, maybe hopefully we instilled it, but I don't think it was a conscious thing. I know my, my father and I didn't do that. But they talked about how important gratitude was, especially in the year of COVID, you know, right when that number one recruiting class they had, their senior year got taken from them, Shields, Maruka, Zahid, all those guys. So whichever one of you guys want to go first, when you think about gratitude and the importance of it, whether it's in your daily life or whether it's as an athlete, uh, or as a coaching staff, you know, how do you think all of us could sort of implement that into our lives? Well, I guess I could start, David. When I took over at Iowa Central back in 1994, I was an assistant coach for five years before that. We had a shooting at the dorms, and it was local people coming out because one of the wrestlers was dating a girl, and her boyfriend was in jail, and so he sent some of his buddies out to shoot up the dorms trying to get to this one guy. And so it was kind of a mess, and they let school out early. And basically what happened is we kind of disbanded the wrestling team from then on, uh, from that point. So I got fired. The head coach got fired. or didn't get fired, but he resigned. Uh, the president of the college left. And then the new president came in and offered me the job the day after he came in to go back and start the program again. So I started with zero wrestlers. Everybody got sent home early April. So we had to start from scratch, David. And my goal was to bring in 30 kids and start all over and build the culture the way you want to build a culture. And, you know, we qualified all 10 kids to nationals that year. It was the first time Iowa Central had ever done it. We weren't real good, but we had some good kids, and uh, mostly Iowa kids. And then all of a sudden, I started recruiting from out of state. Once you start placing higher every year in the national tournament, because we went from ninth to sixth, the third, the second, the second, 
you know, and then we finally got first and then we went, dropped back. We redshirted most of our team and we got third the following year. Um, that was the last year I coached there. But I think once you build success, you build culture and kids come on in to your program with an expectation that, okay, this school has been doing it year in and year out. They can do it for me. And that's kind of what you do. And you tell them when they come in, it's not going to be easy. You know, we have three time state champions in the room. We may have six or seven of them, and only three of them are going to be starters. That's how tough the room is. We lost so many kids because of just talent. And they'd come in, they'd want to work out, they'd work out with some of our kids that were there, and they'd get tossed around like rag dolls. I think that's a mistake letting these kids come in and work out on a recruiting visit because – It's also know, illegal now. So they don't yeah. let you do that. But, I mean, it wasn't that we made them work out. They wanted to see what the, you know, sure. competition was. They wanted to train with some of these guys. And some of them got beat up pretty good. And it's, you know, it bothers a lot of kids because they're not used to that. But that's something that's part of a culture. And you got to learn that you've got to work really hard to get to that next level. Uh, so that's kind of how we did it at Iowa Central. And I'm sure Grant's got a, maybe a different way they did it because they started from never having a wrestling program to building it into one of the best in the, in the world. Yeah, I mean, I mean, a lot of the same things in programs, um, you know, very much, hey, it's, it's going to be tough when you come here. And that's, that's probably one of the most, um, I mean, most of the conversations that we have with a lot of the recruits that come on campus is, it is there is an expectation, um, but – you know, having a, having, going back to like kind of that gratitude thing that Frank is talking about, um, you know, when we first started, like, yeah, you don't, you don't have alumni, you don't have like a great wrestling room, you don't have maybe a trainer that knows wrestling at this point, or you don't have an administration that really understands wrestling as a sport. Luckily, like in Iowa, pretty much everybody has a, an appreciation for the sport of wrestling. So it was very easy to, you know, get people to, to get on board, but you know, culture is basically um, brought from within. So, like, the guys you bring in preach that culture or they are gr grateful for the things that they do have because they came from maybe a place that didn't have it. So, you know, when you recruit kids from small town Iowa that, you know, maybe have to wrestle in the cafeteria or roll out the mats every day and then they actually have a full standing wrestling room, you know, they're grateful for having their own space or yeah. um, they're grateful for uh, – you know, for us, we, we had a, a smaller wrestling room when we first started because we just didn't have enough people on the team. And we slowly grew out of that facility. And then we built a brand new wrestling room. And then the guys that are on the team now never experienced what we had back then <laughs> when we were winning titles in a mat and a half room. And it's like, okay, well, you guys, I mean, you guys got it easy. You can't complain about what we have as far as facility because it's now one of the nicest facilities that we've ever been it, been it. So, you know, be grateful for the people that are in front of you. Be grateful for the alumni that brought you to where we are now. You know, be grateful for, you know, the opportunity that this university is providing to you for you to get your education and, you know, be a part of something great. So I think there's, there's a lot to being grateful for in that sense, but also in grateful in the culture that basically starts off. We had a kid that basically started our culture off the right way because his expectation was to win a national title and his name was matt burns and iowa iowa central guy iowa, iowa central, central guy, guy. yeah you know basically went he won it as a freshman got third as a sophomore but his expectation was to come in immediately into our program first every year and i'm gonna win i'm gonna win a national title and then he goes about his business and he goes and wins that national title so then all of a sudden, that was the first ever national champion in school history in any sport from the beginning of the school, which would have been like 1858 or something crazy. Wow. Uh, they never had a national champion. So the expectation was, is it like you can't win here? Or yeah. so then his expectation as an individual athlete coming from Iowa Central University brought that winning piece of the puzzle to a school that had never done it before. So that his culture within himself, you know, growing up in Iowa and going to Iowa Central and then going to Grandview, you know, he made the change for the culture for the school. 
Yeah. And, you know, it was interesting because we were out there and my, we, for people that don't know, my dad's coached college since 1970, coached about 40 some odd years. Now he's hoping with a high school, but you know, my dad was born in World War II and my dad's full Japanese. And that was not a very popular thing to be in the middle of World War II. And he came out, you know, his family was relocated because of that. You know, they, all their belongings were taken from them. And so this is a person that really grew up poor and obviously dealt with, with racism, and things like that. And I think his, you guys both know my dad, you know, Mark really, really well, but he's not a person that talks a lot. A lot of people actually think he's rude until you get to know him, but it's, he's just shy. He's just, and he's Japanese and that's our culture. You don't, you're not outwardly. I mean, I'm like my mom, obviously, but you know, in terms of the communication part, but like I saw a guy this weekend that's a few years older than me, that was one of my dad's wrestlers. And we just, we were sitting around one night talking and he's explaining to his daughter who my mom and dad were to him and how this, these two people changed his life. And what I can say is that watching my dad as a head coach, Mark, you as a head coach, Nick, and I know you, Grant, like, you know, you are not Hugh Grant, but yeah, you, Grant Turner. Um, I know you guys all cared about the kids. I know we all want to win. We're all fierce competitors, but you cared about the kids more. Like, I know we've all had to throw guys off of our team because they didn't fit the culture. And I think that's the one part about culture that, you don't want to say out loud, but like, look, you're not going to tolerate drinking, partying, being disrespectful to your teammates, being disrespectful to women, any of that sort of stuff. Like, look, we live by a certain code and we all make mistakes. No one's perfect. No one bats a thousand. But if you don't live by that code, we're not the place for you. And I think people can form or they leave. You know, I think that's one of the things – you know, and then, you know, what I saw with those guys, you know, like I saw that Frank changed Zeke and changed Lee. We both know, oh, we all know Lee really well. Lee's just a grinder and he could have the number one recruiting class in the country and he'll be on to the next class the next year. And that attitude does not really blend with being grateful, you know, because grateful is like I'm happy for what I have and it's almost like being content. And you can't be a great recruiter and be content. And, you know, that's what Fritz and I were talking about. I was like, hey, it kind of helped me understand I can be happy that Richie Figueroa is coming to Arizona State. I'm still going to recruit, but I can take a minute and enjoy that Kyle Parko is coming, Richie Figueroa is coming, all of our All-Americans are coming back, Anthony Valencia is coming back again. You know, we got a team trophy, all these things. So to me, and, you know, I'm, you know, I'm just an assistant coach, but I watched – you know, those guys, and I, you know, and GT, you work with a lot of these Olympic level athletes, you know, even the ones that aren't with Nike, you know them because you talk to them about being with Nike at some point. How much do you think gratitude works in, in their lives? You know, because combining with striving to be the best and never being satisfied, but still being grateful for the opportunities they have. I think, you know, it, it's, it's really great for the international athletes because once again, that group is extremely tight and smaller. I mean, all these college guys, there's a lot of college athletes at all divisions. And when you choose to go on to wrestle internationally, that group gets really tight and smaller. And, you know, they're, they're just happy to be associated with, you know, whatever RTC or place that they're working with. And, you know, giving the time because, you know, it, it is a different level. It is a different path. It is a different uh, level of competition for those guys. So I think like a lot of those guys, regardless of wherever they're at, I mean, they're very happy for the opportunity to be able to be at, let's say, a Sunkiss Kids organization or a Titan Mercury organization or, you know, like the, Hawkeye, the, wrestling uh, Club. Yeah. Hawkeye Wrestling Club, Navy yeah. Lion Wrestling Club, you know, the Minnesota Storm, um, the California RTCs. So I think when they get those opportunities, they're very fortunate to have the people that are supporting them on the international scene, along with sponsors and you know, everybody else, but I think they, they can definitely be uh, in that grateful pile for, you know, people like Art Martori, Andy Barth, yeah. you know, you know, those guys that are basically funding 
a lot of the international scope of what we do. And I, I just only single out two guys. There's a, a lot more people to that list. For and, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, but so we, when we, we talked to, I, I visited with Forrest Molinari, who you know very well. I actually met her the first time through you. Kayla Miracle, who is our Olympian at 62 kgs. And, you know, we talked to Zeke and them about the importance of an Art Martori. And that's where they're like, well, look, if you can't be grateful, you have somebody like Art Martori who happens to love wrestling. What if Art Martori and Andy Barth love basketball instead of wrestling? Like how many people's lives would be different, right? And, you know, Kayla is a really soft-spoken girl. And, you know, I just said, I, you don't know me, but, you know, she was, well, I've heard of you. And I said, well, congratulations. She's like, I'm just happy it worked out. You know, like there's this gratitude that kind of runs through all these athletes. And I think a lot of times, we think they're maybe arrogant, but most of them are just awesome people. You know, like Dake and Burroughs went at each other. But when Dake won, he didn't flex on Burroughs. He didn't even really celebrate. It was, they said, he, you know, he patted him on the back and talked to him and said, thank you. You helped push me to this point. You know, so I think that's, you know, that's a very interesting thing. Um, I got one question, David. I wanted to ask Grant this. The RTCs that have come up, in the last 15 years now, because there are so many more, we used to have the sun kiss kids. Right. And that was, that was really the only one that I had ever heard of at that time, because Titan Mercury, I did not hear about until probably 10, 11 years ago was the first time that I had heard about it. Uh, how much of a change because of our, the RTCs we have has helped improve our international wrestlers. Oh, I, there's no question in my mind that the, the ability of these RTCs and more money flowing into the sport has changed the game for our international athletes. Yeah, I mean, to your point, back in the day when I came out of college, it was, you know, the New York Athletic Club, Sunkiss Kids, and then your, your local college clubs. So Cyclone Wrestling Club, Hawkeye Wrestling Club, Panther Wrestling Club, whatever it may be, that version of that for the, the university. But now, like, they're almost all of those places have some sort of post-collegiate presence. And, you know, you're getting some of these guys to continue to train together. I, I can't imagine how many guys are training at universities from other countries as well that have come to the U.S. to train with us because, you know, we, ha we just have more partners. We have more guys investing into their international career. Um, I think it's, you know, and there, there's lots of people that have, you know, financially come back and given to the sport and helped us do that. Um, but I think that because they're seeing a return on investment as well, we won the world title in Paris for the first time since I believe it was 95. Yes, yeah, correct. <laughs> um, and, you know, I, Titan Mercury started helping out and I, I, I don't remember what year it was, so please forgive me, but it, when I first started, Titan Mercury was just kind of a bigger thing at that point. And I know in like 2014, 2015 is like when they started really yeah, putting guys on the teams and helping out with, um, you know, and it very well could have been a smaller thing at that time, but that's when I got more into the sport at that, that time period. So within two to three years, you know, we're, we're, we're world champions. In yeah. men's style, I should say. Yeah, right. But like Forrest Molinari said, she goes, I'd literally be living at the poverty level if it wasn't for the support of, in her case, Sunkiss, but these RTCs. Uh, the, the interview I did, which went up on Friday, was Zeke and Frank and Lee. I asked Zeke the question because Zeke is one of the guys primarily considered for bringing the RTC model over here to the United States because he was the USA wrestling coach. He's a very different perspective on it than most college coaches. And it's if you don't watch the whole interview, if you just fast forward to that part, it's really interesting. He talks about how it happened, what the challenges were, what the old setup was, why the old setup wasn't working, and it wasn't really anybody's fault. It's just like if I'm coaching Grant Turner and he's a national champion, I don't want him going to Colorado Springs all the time. I want him staying here training with me. I want him training with the new guys. I want him co working out with Matt Burns. You know, I want him working out with those guys and how – you know, there was sort of this compromise that happened, and then the RTCs developed out of that. And, you know, I've said this numerous times. I always thought the colleges would drive the RTCs, but I feel like the RTCs are driving the colleges now. You know, like you look at Nitty Lion and how many people they put on the team, both men's and women's, 
and you want to go to college, like, I mean, obviously you have a great college team, but even if they didn't, who, would want, who wouldn't want to work out with, you know, like Helen Maroulis and Thomas Gilman and Kyle Snyder and David Taylor, you know? So, I mean, it's changed the game for sure. And, you know, it's, it's an arms race. You know, the folks that have the most funded RTCs are, are winning a lot. I mean, there's a couple of exceptions, but in general, that's how it goes. And we also have some interesting RTCs in terms of, uh, like Cliff Keen, that's got international. They put the first two athletes on the Olympic team because of how it works in those other countries with uh, Misik and Amin. They are already representing their country before any of ours were. So the RTC stuff, and that's one of the reasons why Mark and I wanted to get you on, GD, because you know all this stuff back and forth. I mean, you know who's doing what and the club stuff and everything else. Um, speaking of culture, I don't know how good of a segue this is, but I spoke to one of the people that says he's in the final four for the job at Illinois. And I was told that I will say this in last name alphabetical order so that no one knows who I spoke to. Uh, I was told it was Mark Branch, Mike Poletta, Tony Ramos, Doug Schwab. And so uh, Mark and I talked about this a week ago we, th I think, I shouldn't speak for Mark, I think Illinois might be the best job in the country that is a team that hasn't been in the top 10 every year because of the amount of high school wrestling, the amount of really high level high school wrestling, and how many of those guys are all american -y. There were seven All-Americans from Illinois high schools at this year's national championships alone. So if you, you, know, if you keep four of those guys, yeah, you're in the top 10 every year. So, you know, when you guys hear those four names, what, what jumps out to you? Oh, you can jump us off. You can lead us off, Marco. Okay. Well, I had talked to, you know, I had thought about this since I had talked to you. I, you know, I basically went right to Branch from Wyoming, who's been a Division One head coach, and Schwab from you and I, who's done a great job at the University of Northern Iowa. So I, I kind of look at head coaches getting a step up on assistant coaches. The more time that I've thought about it, I'm kind of leaning toward Poeta just because he's been there, he's recruited, he's come within the university's program, he wrestled at Illinois. So I think they're probably going to lean toward him. Um, and that, that's just my opinion. And so GT, I think, Northern Iowa, I believe, is a Nike school. Branch, uh, Wyoming's an Adidas school. And I know North Carolina and Illinois are Adidas, Nike schools. So I know you have – I'm sure you know Branch and are friends with them, but I know you work with three of those guys. Uh, you know, you, you're you still in the recruiting – I know you really coordinate or lead the out-of-state recruiting for Grandview. To me, the most important part of that Illinois job is keeping those Illinois kids in state. You know, I mean, you can obviously hire some assistant coaches who want to wrestle with them all day, but you can't win a horse race with a bunch of Clydesdales. So when you think about that, who would, you know, who would you think is maybe either what your thoughts would be or, you know, where, you know, you think they might be leaning? Well, they, I, I mean, to the credit of Illinois and Illinois USA Wrestling, they are a powerhouse. I mean, they take tons of kids to Fargo, tons of kids to cadets, tons of kids to juniors. They have a great women's program. I know that they, they do a really good job. Of course, also, um, our friend Mike Powell does a great job with the Beat the Streets yeah. Chicago within, the, within that state. So um, I don't know enough about the academics or the uh, admissions process to Illinois. I don't know enough about that to, to know, like, hey, is it, you know, more prestigious? Is it more like kind of more – hey, we can get a lot of kids in to go to school here type thing. Um, but to those coaches, um, you know, Branch has done a phenomenal job at Wyoming. I think that, you know, you know it, that is a, a program that we need to keep alive. So if Branch does get the Illinois job, you know, we need to have somebody in Wyoming doing a really good job to take care of those Western states. Um, with Mike, you know, he wrestled there. He's got a great probably relationship with the alumni. You know, they also have – uh, Medlin running the RTC as well. Yeah, They're doing yeah. kind of stuff with Greco there. I don't know if that would then continue. Um, uh, Tony Ramos um, from the state got some good um, connections with you know probably some p potential people from 
you know, back home and whatnot. Um, UN, UNC has done a very good job down there. Um, they have a great staff at North Carolina, you know, Coleman Scott leading those guys, and then also doing a really good job with their, you know, Tar Heel Wrestling Club and RTC with, you know, Macy Kilty and you know, some of the other yeah, guys. Yeah. That have, Jordan Oliver. Jordan Oliver, you know, yeah. our, our representation to go to Sofia, Bulgaria for the Olympic team. Um, and then, of course, Schwab. I mean, Schwab's had, you know, a national champion and Andrew Foster and had other guys up there in the hunt, Max Thompson and uh, Keck Heisen this past year. Um, you know, and Steyer, some of those other guys that have done really well. So I know that, you know, you can't go wrong with any of those guys. I think that they're all, you know, legitimate candidates. So yeah. I, I'm happy to see that those that level of coach wants to have that position. Um, so, I mean, man, it, it's going to be, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Whoever gets that job. Yeah, you know they have they have the potential to really, you know, take a big bite out of recruiting. Um, you know, get a program that was really, really, really good back with Poeta and Friedel and you know, yeah. Kyle yeah. Ott and you know Imar and yeah, Jesse, Jesse Delgado, uh, yeah, Delgado, you know, Tara, Tara Pelly. yeah, Tara Pelly. Um, yeah, they, they got a good history, and I think that they can. Not to, not to say that their their team right now isn't as great, but you know they, they definitely they can have another impact and another era come in really quickly. Yeah, and you know you mentioned Schwab, so we, we should mention like Taylor Luhan was another guy that was the number one seed. Yeah. You know, just and then you mentioned Ramos. O'Connor wins nationals, and O'Connor's an Illinois kid. You know, yeah. so I mean that was one of the seven. You know. A name that I had thrown out there last week, and I have no way of knowing if there's any interest in him or vice versa, but, you know, Morningstar has done a lot of recruiting in Illinois and done it pretty successfully. You know, to me, you know, like if you, if you recruit Illinois successfully, you're going to be good. I mean, like you mentioned, because, you know, you're at Fargo every year. I do junior duels every year. And a couple of years ago, Oklahoma beat Illinois. And the first thing the Oklahoma team said was, Illinois is the gold standard. Like it meant more beating Illinois. It's not like if Illinois just did had five open weights this year for whatever reason. Like it does it, you know, to beat the champ, be the champ, you got to beat the champ. And Illinois is the champ every year when you go to these tournaments. Like even if they weren't, those are the those are the teams. I mean, you know, like I one of my a good buddy of mine, Kyle Martin, is he's the cadet director in PA, and they've got you know PA is amazing because they have really great sort of cadet then it trails off a little bit of juniors and then they have the most all Americans in, in D one every year. You know, so obviously those high school coaches are doing a great job getting them ready for folk. But, you know, my understanding from the person I talked to is the decision will probably get made this week. It ties right into the culture conversation and something else with the dead period is finally over. It's going to be over on June one. And you're going to see a lot of frequent flyer miles, you know, in June. These coaches are going all over. I, you know, like a lot of people are old school guys. Like I saw Dick Vitale, the basketball guy, complaining about kids transferring. Well, these kids had to make decisions without ever getting on campus. I mean, and normally I'm pro coach. I was a coach. But, you know, if you have to go watch a Zoom video of what your dorm is going to look like and what the restroom room is going to look like and, you know, recruiting is like dating. They're really, really nice to you. And when you get there, they're not as nice to you because you don't, you're not leaving for a while. I mean, nobody wants to say that, but that's the truth. And so maybe somebody's not as nice to you now and you're just like, it's not the same fit that I thought it was going to be. So I think between the dead period being over, the transfer portal, hot and heavy. I mean, we've got, you know, like Parco went in and came out, you know, Max Dean is in there. Shane Griffith is in there. Jaden Abbas is in there. You know, there's kids going in and out of there all the time. I mean, that's how Jaden Ironman got to Iowa. I mean, these are things that literally changed the national tournament. If Jaden Ironman's not at Iowa, Penn State may win nationals this year. That's how big of a pick. That's how important the portal is. And I literally just thought that that's how important the portal is. Literally, you could argue chain two won the national title. So uh, Jared Verclearen, by the way, can, uh, committed to UVA. So I was – Text and Paulson about that. They're very excited about that. Um, Shane Griffith, his short list is Penn State, Michigan, and North Carolina. And he's waiting to make visits. 
he actually wants to visit. So now he's in a unique situation. A, he's a national champion, and B, he's going to be a graduate student. So like, even if somebody tried to hold him back and now they gave out this exemption anyway, but he's going to have a lot of freedom. Uh, Joey Prada at Oklahoma University too, by the way, I was texting with Lou Rosselli, huge pickup for them. They, that was a big hole for them all year. They had a pretty good dual meet team. They had an unbelievable big 12 tournament team and a guy like Prada, you know, gives them a lot of chances to win a lot more matches. Uh, last thing, we'll t- I guess we'll talk about today. Well, no, two things. Jason Borelli to American University. Yep. So that came out. What were you guys' thoughts on that? Uh, I thought it was a great pickup for American University. He's done such a great job at Stanford. Uh, American's another one of those schools with the academics are so rigorous. And, it, you know, it's different when you go to one of the top educational schools in the country, David, and you're trying to spend five hours a day uh, training um, dieting, doing all the things right to be successful in college wrestling. And then on top of that, you have to spend at least six or seven hours a day, not just in class, but above classroom work, studying, because you're taking some of the hardest classes. So Americans a lot is very similar to Stanford, I think. So I think he knows what kind of student athlete he needs yeah. to bring in. So I think he's going to do a really good job. What do you think, yeah. GT? I, I mean, I love Jason Borelli. I think he's a, a phenomenal coach. I th- he's done a great job at Stanford. Um, you know, I think that, you know, him staying within that kind of that academic world, like, you know, the, the Princetons, the Columbias, the Harvards, the Stanford, American is very much in that conversation with, with education. So, you know, he's got a pretty good hold on, you know, maybe the academic side and who he can recruit and knowing that, you know, he's got probably the same kind of contacts to uh, on the academic yeah. side to make sure that, you know, one, they can, they can, one, be eligible and get into the school and then also on the athletic side, you know, which, what you're getting. So I think it's a really good hire. And once again, American is, you know, they're, they're a great university. They've had, you know, national champions. And so they have a commitment to wrestling. So I'm, I'm very excited about that hire. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I think one of the things that struck me about Borelli is you have a recruiting list, right? We all have our recruiting list. His list doesn't change. You know, like if I was coaching junior college, my list and his list don't overlap at all. <laughs> you know, like there's a there's a big separation there. His Stanford list and his American list, the same thing. You got to have 30 on the ACT, get, you know, be the top 6% of your class, had to have done some special things outside. You know, all your extracurriculars have to be on point. You have to be great socially, can't have any problems there. So, I mean, he's going to be able to hit the ground running. Uh, one of the kids from St. Louis, Lucas White, who trains at uh, CBC, went to CBC, trains with us in the summertime. His coach, high school coach, is a good buddy of ours, Cornell Robinson, who wrestled for my dad and I. He was a commit to America, and I actually talked to him. He's excited, you know, Borelli's going to be there. And I think that's the other thing, too, is keeping the kids and the recruits that you have. Like, if they get a keys on Clark to go back there, something like that, that becomes impactful right away. That's a hard school to ever win a national title because you just you're so limited, your recruiting pool. You have to hit on every single thing and never miss. But, yeah, I think it was awesome for Borelli. If somehow Stanford keeps their team, it's just going to be complete chaos because who knows who would go back to that program. I mean, but obviously Borelli proved you can win there and you can have a lot of success there. So uh, the last thing, and we're going to – actually, I'm going to do a full podcast with him on Thursday, but Gary Mayab – uh, on the USA Wrestling Greco side, he's a, a legend in the Missouri, state of Missouri, Kansas City guy. And GTU said off the air, he's actually coming to Grandview this week. He's he's trans, transferring within USA Wrestling, going to be the developmental coach on the Greco side. So basically the Kevin Jackson of Greco instead of director of ops. And he's going to be operating that from Kansas City. I think he'll obviously have to travel to uh, the OTC periodically, but uh, and I think he's coming back to coach Oak Park High School. And that guy coached some freaking hammers when he was in high school. They had four time after four time after four time state champions. So if that's correct, and we're going to get the lowdown on that, Missouri wrestling just got a lot better because that guy's not going to coach a mediocre team. And, you know, the state of Missouri, frankly, got better overall because now all these Greco guys are going to be coming in and things like that. So that's exciting selfishly for me here in Missouri. 
And uh, really for all of us, because, you know, KC is just a hop, skip, and a jump from Des Moines and all that sort of thing. So next week, we'll probably do a big preview of the Coralville Tournament GT, and we'll probably pick your brain a lot on that because it's juniors and seniors. I got a lot of questions about what happens to the guys that were on the – guys and girls, excuse me, on the Olympic team. Uh, how are they seating the non-Olympic weight classes? You know, hopefully they'll have either entries or, or brackets out by then, you know, Wrestling's always awesome. Everybody gets their stuff in early. <laughs> Usually it's like two days ahead of time. You know who's wrestling in the tournament. So um, I think that'll be it for this week. Uh, I'll let you guys sign off before I wrap this up. Hey, it was, it was great to have you, Grant. Uh, I learned a lot today. You're very knowledgeable, and it'll be fun talking to you for the next few weeks until uh, you take over my position here. <laughs> it's not a takeover it's a summer winter thing hey it's not a chance i got two <laughs> i am not a greco guy grant i don't know greco uh i don't know any of the moves i did a little <laughs> bit of freestyle but not much i wouldn't really say i was anywhere near good at it uh i know collegiate wrestling that's kind of where i've you know stayed and so i like to stay there so <laughs> you're, you're the man grant I appreciate it. And I, I'm I'm pretty much undefeated against 125 pounders in Greco, so I, I'm gonna stick. To, I'm gonna stick to those type of guys. And in especially, two. <laughs> I could win maybe a middle middle school state tournament. I might be able to win it. I'm not sure. I'm sure that there's some kids out there that could give me a there's run. Some middle schoolers coming up now that I would yeah. want no part of. Hey, no, David, exactly. Next, next week we also need to talk about the club duels that they had this weekend. If you did. You know, it was on yeah. show all weekend. There were some great matches. Yeah, quick, matches. quick shout out to John Hughes for putting that together. He actually texted me about two months ago and asked me to put together a team. And I told him I was busy. I love Hughes. He's a good salesman. He's like, you're not that busy. And then I sent him my schedule for the last next 10 weeks. He goes, all right, you might be busy enough, but let's put you in touch. Put me in touch with somebody who'll put a club team together. But I'm a salesperson, so I respected that. I was like, man, I love it. You know, so um, this is this is fun for me. I doing these pods where we just all talk and kick it around. I, I end up talking and bugging you guys once a week off the air anyway. So this is really fun. Um, on behalf of USA Wrestling and Nike, we thank everybody for watching, listening, tweeting, uh, Facebooking, Instagramming, everything we're doing. Uh, we're trying our best to give you guys the most intelligent podcast out there. Thank you guys so much. We'll come back to you next week.